Hello, it's Snacks and Chats time. Number six, I'm going to go to Froome and hang out with Alex Hart and talk about snacks, obviously. Um, politics, no doubt. Music, um, Extinction Rebellion and the Forestry School. So, let's get going. Here's to a great interview. <laughs> Elderflower. Elderflower. Oh, made by a child. Okay, so I'm in Froome. You are. How come you're in Froome? Oh, blimey. Hmm. Oof. Um, because I couldn't afford to live in Bath. Oh, yeah. Got ya. Yeah. Now, my friends lived in Nunny, and uh, me and Jan thought, oh, Froome's a nice place. This is a really uh, interesting question. I could harp on about no, that all night, but. No, well, you could, well we're, we're here to harp on. Um, but this is a great house and Froome is a really, really ace town and I'm very glad I live here. Yeah, um, when when we walked uh, through town today, I mean, it's got whole food shops and a nice vibe and the, the, you know the guy in the shop and do you know a lot of people? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so tell me what goes on in Froome. Blimey, um, okay, a little tour guide Froome, I'm going to sound like, well, we try and play it down actually, there is a campaign going called Keep, I oh, no, not Keep, Make Froom shit again <laughs> because the house prices are astronomical, people, and um, yeah, we blame it on Cooper and Tanner. So, no, it's a shit place. If you want to live in a good town, make your own town cool. Um, but you could start as Froom did, which I thought was very clever years ago when Froom was shit. They made a little slogan, and it was Froom, it's a wonderful place. There's this poster there. Yeah, there's lots of uh, rebellion stuff. I was very happy to be part of this. Froome, um, that's why I like to live here, because it's so political. And we do lots of, there's tons of people who, if you go, hey, why don't we, um, why don't we organise an event to teach each other how to get out of a, to get into a lock-in a lock position, or how to glue yourselves to something, or, or how to talk to people that you absolutely loathe, because they're laying into you. And so we do workshops and practice all this stuff. I'm used to that. <laughs> Um, I was chatting two weeks ago, you were saying about you were sitting in the middle of a road? I sat in the middle of the road. Yeah, what yeah. were you doing? Well, I'm a bit, I'm a bit upset, really. Uh, very angry. Uh, for all the reasons that you can imagine. Uh, thanks to the punks, I've also known a lot of people who feel the same way. Um, but they're doing a shit job, aren't they? The people in power of looking after our planet. Hi. <laughs> hey. Well, you asked me why I sat in the road, and it was because I was pretty pissed off, and uh, I just wanted to annoy people, and uh, and it worked. It was really good fun. But there was about a hundred of us doing it all over the country at the same time, and the police were lovely, and they blocked the road off, and looked after me. And after an hour, she kept going, Are "You going to leave?" And I said, "No, not yet." And then after about an hour and ten minutes, I was like, "Okay, I don't have to get arrested. This is great." And she um and blocked the road and came and chatted to us about why we were why we were doing it. Can you can you see that? He just fell off the back of my poster. Oh. I was doing it for him. Here cool. he comes. Yeah. And then I went to a meeting today about forest school at a school and the caretaker at the end of the meeting he went, Yeah I seen you blocking the road. I've never been called a cunt so many times in my life. Jeez. When they blow bubbles and hiss, it means they're angry, but this one's quite relaxed. Yeah, so we've got the snacks. <laughs> mm. We've got cassettes that I nearly, I nearly knocked down. The fresh Maxim. Organic um, paprika corn chips. So we're looking at a poster that says Knucklehead. Can you see that? Yeah, I think so. I'll just... Oh, <laughs> well, that's fair. And I'll just adjust this... This leg, oops, cool. So who is Knucklehead? So Knucklehead, oh my God, that was how I think I felt like my life had begun. I'd gone to gigs from 13 onwards, sort of damned when I was 13 and, and I loved music. And I'd been taught how to, I'd learned how to play the clarinet, but I'd always wanted to play the sax. And I left home and uh, Mr. John Montague came, I heard from someone that he was looking for a sax player and I got picked up by his girlfriend in this funny little car and driven 
up Rush Hill and I drank a... Uh, is this in Bath? In Bath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there were all these guys that were a bit older than me and uh, we drank a lot. I drank four cans of Tenants Blue and auditions, <laughs> which I don't really remember. And then they said I had a, I had a, a band. I was in a band and we were called Knucklehead and we were so big in Bath. I thought that was it. I thought my life was going to be fame and fortune forever and ever. I mean, look, this is the kind of quality. Lovely, lovely. And then just tilt it back slightly. Does that work? We're, we're back on. Yeah, keep it on there. So what's going on so there? I was, um, I can't remember which gig that was, the Christmas. <laughs> yeah, Christmas gigs. We did do a gig where we dressed up as the Nativity because there were a lot of us in the band. So we did have Metz as the baby Jesus, John Montague as Mary, Matt would have been... Uh, so this is jo John Montague who also plays uh, in... Um, oh, in Seven Crowns. Seven Crowns. They're a bit different to this nativity thing, aren't they, then? Yeah, yeah John yeah. always had a vision and he, yeah. and, we, <laughs> and we, it worked, so he pulled it off. We got a gig with Alice Donut, which might be one of the high points of my life. It's, you might have to do a... That, that's a beautiful thing in Bristol. And, and uh, for a couple of years, I was living the dream. And that's how I ended up... Oh. Ended up in Bremen in, in Germany and ended up in Corrupt, playing saxophone in Corrupt. I've never been very good, but I've always had a saxophone, so wonderful. And then I came back to England and got together with three of the guys from Knucklehead. And we were in um, oh, yeah. the all-nighters. Let's go to Wigan. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, and I haven't played my saxophone since. OK. Now, a lot of connections of uh, Bath, Bremen... I mean, Bob. Bob. So, Bob stands for Bath, Oakland and Bremen. And there is a picture of Karen Elgy in here, I just noticed. Awesome. There she is. Root to our Karen. Bond. Look at that. Let's get that nice and close. Oh, that's fantastic. I've got it in mid scrapbook. Yeah. Thank you. I do Wicked. believe you had something to do with that as well, Jasper. Wasn't it like, let's have an arts festival? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. We did the... Um... Oh, yeah. The uh, breaking borders, breaking borders, what a phrase. Um, yeah, cele a celebration of current punk culture. Wow. I suppose everyone knows what the Extinction Rebellion is, don't they? Or do they? Do they? I mean, still not enough people know. I think um, the powers that be have succeeded in keeping most people in the dark. But uh, Greta Thunberg did a good speech at the G7. Yeah, Travesty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to get the cats. The in. cats, yeah. Hello, cat. It's very easy to tell which one's the boss cat. So, what's happening tonight at seven o'clock? No, eight o'clock. Yeah, so I've got loads of different hats. So I'm going to put my um, radio DJ hat on. And, uh, <laughs> which one's and, uh, that? Which, which, which hat? Yeah, that which one? one is that? Could that might be, that be ratty. That could be ratty. So we're going to go down to the um, the town hall, and. Uh, Jasper and I are going to make a show for Froom FM, Community Radio. You know the jingle. And if you don't, you really, really need to tune into Froom FM, OK? Very important. Uh, you will also hear other punks. That Say you that may again. Know. You'll hear other punks that you may know on, on, on Froom FM, right? Basement 7, shout out. Shout out to Basement 7, yeah. Um, Froom FM. So how does the... Uh, how does it work financially? Like any other struggling voluntary association, they have like donations and yeah. they sell sausages outside um, home, home shops and um, home stores. Yeah. What else do we do? We pay subs, we pay to DJ because we, we love it, we support okay. it. And um, yeah, what a great way to get to know. And how many years has it been going? It's been on FM, I think, for about. 10 years now. Awesome. Just renewed our licence. Means we can't swear, which is different because on Snacks and Chats you can swear, can't you? Uh, well, as you just spoke, <laughs> as you just said uh, earlier, yeah. Yeah, you can, of course you can. Um, yes, that won't have to be deleted. Yeah. yeah. Um, but let me go back to the planet just a little bit because it does tie in. Why you I mean back to, to the planet? Uh, that was what, quite funny. A musical link? <laughs> yeah. Go on. Oh, yeah, because, oh, yeah, the opportunity to talk about um, 
Uh, Forest School. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, why I agreed to do the snacks and chats, I think. It's like, okay, come and see what we're doing because it is quite depressing trying to fight the powers that be because as much as you fight the power, they, they're pretty powerful and they're doing some shit things that we cannot stop. Um, like firing satellites into orbit. Um, but yeah, so I work outside with young people and children uh, because as we all know, being out in nature is very, very, very good for your mind. Um, and of course then you get in touch with the nature and then you learn what that tree is called or you get to look a little bee in the, in the eye and stroke its back and then you care, you suddenly deeply care whether this is going to still be here or not and you realise how beautiful it is and then you really, really, really don't want to see HS2 continue or ExxonMobil continue or don't get me started on the Tory government. Uh, yeah, so I don't teach the children politics. We just do nature and, well, we answer their questions, but we don't do politics uh, overtly. <laughs> it just happens. Yes. And I can't wait to take you to Ballis Veg because that is a nest of, uh, of... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, ah, disobedience. Ooh, cracking. I thought it was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, we're getting up at 6.30 tomorrow, folks. Um... Start work at eight. Uh, yeah. Alex will be there working all day. Uh, I'll just take... Well, I'll tell you what, I'm really looking forward to meeting the kids. They sound really cool. Well, kids are, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. but you mentioned just before, they're, little they're like, they like going. These are also... These are, the, these are the kids that the schools are like, oh, yeah, please, have them for a day, because we don't know what to do with them, and mostly they're labelled as, as having ADHD, and mostly boys... Um, and apparently they do loads of naughty things when they're at school, but they, they're, a, they're a right laugh. <laughs> Just be eating. Yeah, we've been through this, Jasper. Yeah. So you say, have a snack, and then you ask me a question. Here you go. All right, then. What are you going to ask me? No, I'm not asking you anything. You, oh, you, no. You just ramble on about I'm going to ramble on, because I could... Things to do with wood. Ramble on, because... I lived in Germany for a long time and then I came back. I left Germany to live in Spain the year that the first Bob Festival happened. Corrupt were playing. And I've been practicing my saxophone in the, in the mountains in Spain, getting ready all on my own for this big gig. It's like, wow, Corrupt, my German band is going to play in England. But our flight got delayed, so I missed it. We turned up at the port about in a taxi from the train station. I had my sax, I put it together in the taxi, and I'm like, and there's people coming out going, oh, they were really good. That was a sad day. And then I moved back to England, and I lived um, a bit on um, Cleveland Row. And Cleveland Row? Another Bob Festival, and everyone was camping along by the railway and in the garden, and the house was full, and the port about beer garden was full. That was nice. I mean, that's a small world. Um, that's where I left this morning from Cleveland Row. Yeah. Anyway. I've now got a really lovely paste of almonds in my molars. Mm-mm. Good snacks. Right. But I'm a lucky, I'm a lucky cow. I'm a really lucky cow. I lived in Bath and somehow they did it so I could sign on and study. And I got what I needed to be able to go to university. Well, OK, I'll go to university. I'm sick of cleaning to earn money. Um, I got onto this course where I spent <clears throat> half my time in Bath and the other half in Rotterdam. And I got lots of teaching qualifications. And when I finished, I stayed in Rotterdam because Rotterdam absolutely ruled. You loved it there. We were on tour with Citizen the Fish. I think we hung out with you, didn't we? Yeah, you stayed in our beautiful house, our big By the house. water... Waterways. The port of the port, port Chabau. Yeah, it's awesome. From the port of Burt to the port Chabau. And we put on gigs. That's how I met Jan. Okay. And uh, da, 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 da. what were you studying then at university? I studied English literature and European education. And one of the modules was radical education. And me and my mate Natalie, we were both 
radical and it fired us up to be teachers. We were like, we are going to change, we're going to change the world. Education is the future, the young people, of course. But no, you get into a school and you realise it is not that easy at all. In fact, you get very sore head. I taught English in Holland for five years and uh, got the kids recycling paper. We'd cycle through the city with this paper bundled to because the, they've all got bikes in, in Holland. It's really good fun. And uh, they still at the end of it said they recycle paper because Miss Hart loves trees. Because they didn't have any trees. It was all city. And after a while in Rotterdam, I loved it, but there was no countryside. So I'd find myself cycling off on a Sunday, desperate to find some trees or any, anything that was overgrown or had a bird maybe singing in it. Um, so moving back to Bath, that was good fun. Well, except we couldn't afford Bath, so we came to Froome again, where I'd been before and knew it was a wonderful place. And uh, finally got out of teaching in classrooms and got qualified to teach kids out of doors. So I was given what's essentially a license to work with children, knives and fire. And with this title, forest school leader, schools let me do things they would never let me do when I was a, a teacher. I asked a school once, what's your policy on going outside? And they said, oh, don't. Don't. Um, but I'd gone outside with the kids in an English lesson and they were just really relaxed and chilled and it was lovely. And I thought, wait a minute, they're not misbehaving when they're outside. Misbehaving. So, yeah, outdoors, the kids don't have the roof, the ceiling. They don't have this shit about what they're wearing and their uniforms and they don't get told off for running. And they don't get told off for twitching and running and hanging in a tree. And, um, and you realise that's what... That's what people need to have, isn't it? It's contact with other living, tangible things outside of the human world. Because the stuff we've made, I mean, yeah, we've made some lovely stuff. Look at look at the house. But a lot of what we've made is, is shit. And it's, uh, yeah, that ends there. Otherwise, I'll just launch into an anti-capitalism tirade. And as Jay said... Capitalism is boring. Talk about my music. Well, it's nice collecting instruments. I've, long, I've always wanted to learn the trumpet. I've now got two, um, but I can't play them. And that was one that Jan didn't support my um, practising so much. And I think everyone was glad. So Jan? Well, learning to play the trumpet's kind of also loud and difficult and very noisy. Jan who? Oh, Jan. Yeah. Yeah, and my musician partner, my bass playing boyfriend of 18 years today, actually. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, he's upstairs doing the artwork for Gravity Wave Riders. I'll plug them. The Gravity Wave Riders. Is that a group? Prog. Oh, awesome, it's right. Sort of, yeah, wishy, lots of space. Space rock. Sorry. Space, space rock. rock. Oh, just change of scene. We're heading to the town hall. Which is where? Thanks. Through my fan happens. And there's Julian, the director now. Okay. Hello. Yeah. In. We're in. Cool. Look at that. I've got this posh mic. One, two, one, two. And Alex will be over there in that room. Nice. On the show. Oh my god. <laughs> Alice Veg that we built in 2016 and it's still standing might be a couple of holes but welcome
and we're going to do a sponsored walk to raise money in the kids thought of this for UNICEF that's nice of them isn't it so yeah we've set this project up for um, kids that don't get on in school very well and so we're here two days a week with a group of seven six seven kids um, and we do lots of cooking and crafting and skills and running around and playing and being and it's good for everyone Alright, thanks for having me. Give us a big shout for this place. Hip it! Hooray! 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 Hooray!